with his vampire lady breath. Bam's got better objections to this marriage. We got snakes, and, and we ain't afraid to use them. And a bat, too. Why did you tell him you have a bat, bruv? Vampires love bats. So, Manpreet, a warm welcome to you on filmishowme.com. Thank you so much for joining me and a huge congratulations on Count Abdullah. I've watched a few episodes and it's an absolutely bloody great comedy. I love it. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, look, um, I was reading up actually uh, a piece that someone had written about the works that you've done. And I think you were saying that uh, Amrita in Count Abdullah really... Uh, was someone you related with because again she's sort of fighting stereotypes which you've had to fight as well so yeah. if you could also shed a bit more light on that I think it would be wonderful to to know more about that on my personal or, or yeah personal? Both, both yeah um yeah so just like I'm from a Sikh background I grew up in Southall um and you know it was it was different to what it was like now I guess and I live in Windsor now so it's a big change from Southall to to Windsor um, and it was hard, you know, like being, you know, South a like South Asian and just trying to, yeah, trying to do acting, like wanting to be an actress and, and you know, doing the Western side of it. It was difficult. Um, I have a science degree and, you know, I did that and it's good. I'm so, it's so weird when you're younger, you just want to grow up, don't you? You just want that dream and you want to go for it. And, and, and I still did that, but I also had like a backup plan, which was my science degree, which was great. But once I finished uni, I was like, right, I don't want to do this. Like, I want to do acting, just acting. And it was really hard for people in the community to kind of understand that. that oh, like, she doesn't want to have a full-time job, like, or a nine-to-five job, and she's got a science degree. And it's just, my dream was always to do this. Um, and so, yeah, I guess the reason I said I relate so much to Marita is that, you know, I think you always want to please your parents and your family and your community. But at the same time, it's like, you also want to do what you want to do, you know? And so I think, yeah, there's that fight of like, oh, right. I, I've done all the good stuff. Like, I just want to go and live my dream now. And so for me, it's acting like, so yeah, that was, I, I, I struggled with that a little bit. Um, yeah. I mean, when it comes to comedy, you're definitely no stranger to that. I mean, of course you did free reign before, um, but I do think that when it comes to Asim Abbasi's writing, you're in for a complete wacky treat, which is very much, which very much ruffles the feathers. I mean, he's definitely no stranger. I mean, his last uh, content that he did, Jurel's, really, you know, sort of broke the glass ceiling in terms of cultural stereotypes as well as fusing fant fantastical elements to it. So I think for you to get used to that writing, that sort of, vision of you know breaking cultural stereotypes as well as uh wacky on the edge comedy uh how tough was it for you to perhaps get that balance and imbibe that in yourself as an actor um so for me as much as I yes I did free reign but it wasn't it was so different to this if that makes sense I was 24 to 27 playing 15 it was very different whereas this you know Amrita's in her mid-20s um and it was more the fact that the way it was written was written for our community. It was written for people that could relate to it. And um, it is this completely wacky, crazy side. And it's it was fun to be more than, if anything, it was fun because we were allowed to explore these characters and it was great. That was the fun of it. Um, and then at the same time to put in, um, you know, put in stuff that you can create this character. We we were able to establish these characters with um Arsim and it was amazing. Like it was it was um it was a lot of fun. It was very, very like interesting. Like when I say that it's like it's something that's never been done before and that's why it was just so fun. Um pushing those boundaries, right? And sometimes you gotta do it. Yeah, for sure. No, absolutely. And speaking of boundaries, I think it's such a wonderful phase where I feel like British Asian cinema is finally finding its voice again because you've had so many great films which have released Little English, What's Love Got to Do With It, Polite Society. But I still think we've got a very long way to go. I mean, Manpreet, mm -hmm. for you to get over this, you know, I think for you to get the sort of mainstream and commercial Western sort of, 
validation in that sense. Do you feel like, what do you think is the biggest hurdle in our fight right now, I think, in terms of reaching that sense of equality? Because everyone talks about diversity, but let's face it, most of the time it's just there for a tick boxing, tick boxing exercise, isn't it? There is, I think the difference is, is it is, it is changing. Yes, we have a long way to go, but casting is changing and you can see it by even just like, uh, this was casted by Aisha Bywaters and she is amazing. She put like a lot of the work now that comes for diversity comes from her and, 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 you know, we all really appreciated that when we came in for this to audition and I've auditioned for many things with her. Um, so y- yes, it's changing, but you know, it's, um, how do I say it? Like, I remember when I was, I was at university, I was about 19, 20, and I got a role on Wizards vs. Aliens, which was written by Russell T Davies. Now, I remember the role was written and it said Caucasian, and the name was Katie Lord, and I remember going up for it thinking, oh, uh, I shouldn't be here. Like, I, this is, I'm not going to get this role. And um, my mum says, no, just go. Like, they've called you in, just go. So I went and... I remember the casting director, he said to me, Manny, you're the first person to read in. Give it your best shot. And I remember auditioning just once and I got it. And I thought, oh, wow, I got it. Like the name stayed, and I got, and I was like, ah, oh. and it, it has slowly changed. Yes, we have a far, a long way to go, but the more we create these stories, the more we are allowed to tell these stories and come together. And the show about this particular show, you see so many South Asian actors come together. Like it's, it's not been done before. When we all sat around the table together for the read through, it was incredible. We all knew of each other, but majority, like none of us have worked together like this as in all of us together like that. It was, it was incredible. And so it's, it's going to get there. I have faith in it. It's getting there. It is getting there. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Right. And I think also when it comes to vampires and uh, South Asian representation, I mean, we've had like lots of Indian serials that have uh, yeah. showcased like vampires. We've had like Yaar Ki Ye Kahani before, uh, which again is kind of like in a way kind of reminds us one of like Twilight Vampire Diaries and all of that. Um, but I think in terms of actually a mainstream international platform, which fuses South Asian culture with vampires, I think this definitely is the first for sure yeah. so I think for you growing up I think around that whole vampire um sort of fantastical aspect as well and then also using the you know the South Asian Desi environment that you've grown up with did you also how have how has that happened in your life and do you think that experience in your life has helped you with this series as well I do because I feel like having the the combination of the two the fact that it's not done <laughs> You grow up dreaming, right? When we were all at that stage watching Twilight, who would have thought, you know, like 15 years later when I was at school that I could be in a show that was representing that as well as a comedic side? Because I always say it's a cross between Vampire Diaries and Inbetweeners. And I grew up watching that. I would never think I would ever have a chance to be a part of something like that. Um, For me, it was using my childhood, my 20s, a mixture of experiences into this character, into this role. Um, and it's just different for me. I, I'm I'm really proud of what we've produced on this show. Sure. So Manbri, talk to me a bit more about your acting career. I mean, in terms of your inspiration, you know, because you said that you wanted to ditch your science degree and <laughs> enter this crazy world of creativity, which honestly is both crazy but also sensible at the same time it's very weird to describe but what would you say has been the real guiding factor in you actually choosing this profession guiding factor um you have to be resilient and I think that's one thing I learned and I have learned from a really young age um my career wise I started very young which I'm really grateful for it was very different to when I started the industry to how it is now which is it's great because there's just so many more you know so many more of us doing it it's great like you know and we're supporting each other um but I've been really lucky I think if I didn't book the jobs over the years I have you know a part of me probably would have been like oh I had people saying to me are you sure you're you're doing you know you should go back to it and I had it like I did have it but the guidance I would say is that I also had very very good support behind me too like I always say like my nanny is like my biggest fan like 
you know and if you have that and they're rooting for you no matter what like I've had you know during COVID I didn't work two and a half years you're gonna have these up and down moments but I also believe that if you're happy 100% doing what you do you need to do it whichever way it may be at the same time you don't need one interest only like I still love science like I do like science that's why I did it um and I'm also doing a new qualification now so I'm you know I have other interests but my predominant thing that I love is acting and I want to do it and I think if you have that passion and that fight for it like mm-hmm. that will keep you going and having good support you need your you need your supporters you need your people cheering you on behind you and I've had that I'm lucky to have that because it can be a very lonely space as well you know I think a creative life is very lonely in the sense because you know you just don't know how when your next shift is going to end when you, you're going to get at your next gig I mean for us as journalists it's pretty much quite quite similar actually because you know it's just so unpredictable and that unpredictability brings a sense of solitude not perhaps for the right reasons but you know uh, how have you dealt with that loneliness I think in your life or that dark space again do you think it is that support that you've had at home that really helps you to get out of that dark space I do think so yeah my mum I'm really lucky I'm very close with my mum and my mum has always I think if anything she found it harder I remember like sometimes when I'd have my down moments or rejections like you're in the last two consistently sometimes and you're like oh I'm not booking the job what's wrong with me or and or you'd get upset because you'd have this hope and it's taken and you're like oh and your parent my mum was the one that would see it and I felt really bad actually because I'd be like oh my god like I feel bad but then I'm, she's watching me feel that way as well and it's taken me years like I've done it for over a decade like 16 years I've had to learn I guess you learn and you learn that it is an industry of it's hard work it's not it's you never know it's unpredictable and I think the way I've dealt with it is by having other interests I I would say that's my way of doing it like yes I love it but I think having other interests is really good and it's healthy I think you need that like even if it's just a hobby that you enjoy doing you need other things that you enjoy in life and make the most of those because another thing with acting and creativity as soon as it picks up that's it everything changes you know next day you you know that's the excitement of it at the same time you know the next thing you know you're flying off somewhere or going somewhere the next day and you know so yes there's this these two sides to it and I think if you can you know, take time to focus on yourself to to figure out what else it is that you might enjoy too as a hobby or on the side or, you know, just appreciating every little moment. You're, you've got to live life to put it into your work as well, I think. You've got to have these ups and downs because these ups and downs I can put in my work. It's experiences. It's taught me to be stronger and it's how I've learned. It's who I am today. If I didn't go through it, even as hard as it was, yeah. um, the times that I have had where it's like this, um, I, I wouldn't be here. This... Yeah, it is hard. It's not an easy. It's not easy being creative at no. all, but it's worth it. <laughs> Acting, uh, creativity is such a powerful medium, you know, and I think when it does come to the narratives that we've seen, we were talking about representation earlier, but I do feel when you do reach a certain state of power, like, for example, if you look at Priyanka Chopra, I mean, her journey is so inspiring. I think the way she has sort of done everything and now is in a position where she can set you know, tell stories the way she wants to. You know, when if you when if you evolve and you end up reaching a stage of success where perhaps you can also dictate what sort of stories you'd like to tell, what would you say would be the factor you'd like to uh make that change in in terms of the representation that we're seeing and perhaps our voices, actual authentic stories being told? I think it's just knowing that there's an open door I'd make sure that there's an open door for people to be able to tell these stories to tell their stories um and the thing is is as well like it can be it's a weird one as well because I find that sometimes everyone feels like if someone's got a story to tell from a South Asian background that it has to be um stereotyped it doesn't there's so many stories out there but it's still so like it's not an open enough and I think that's what it would I would want the door open and I think it's a strong word those two words say a door open because the half the time they're closed you know and um in itself writing's hard I've tried writing and I I would love to do that one day as well myself actually write a story um and I'm just sitting there doing it it's it's hard I remember sitting there talking to Carmel the writer of um Count of Dilla and I was like to Carmel like I'm gonna need some advice here because I was like I'm struggling but I want to write and I know I I have a story to tell and um and I think the more and more we're realizing that these doors are opening and we can do it 
the more and more it's gonna happen and the, the better like it's I think in the next like few years things are changing and for the better like it's it's great and I would continue to support that and make sure that you know more voices can be heard mm -hmm. now almost just over a, a decade ago you did a mm. film called Tez which was a Hindi movie Kangana was in it Anil Kapoor was in it Ajay Devgan was in it it was a Priya Darshan film right and I know you had to learn some Hindi for that but uh, have you actually also considered, because I think, I mean, of course, I don't want to make this sound stereotypical because every time we speak to a British Asian, it's always like, oh, have you worked in Bollywood or do you aspire to work there? I mean, of course, we will aspire to do other stuff as well, I'm sure. But yeah. you know, in terms of actually working in, in Hindi cinema as well, have you actually considered maybe or have you expressed an interest in working there more and doing more roles there too? Do you know, um, so when I did that, I was really young and I actually didn't speak Hindi. <laughs> um, I had to learn it and I and I did Hindi classes and honestly, it was, I, I, you know, I love it. Like, I always find like, because I speak Punjabi and Punjabi is like, I was like, Punjabi is really slang, I find sometimes, whereas Hindi is like really like fluent, and really lovely. Um, so like I had to like kind of, I understood Hindi, but I couldn't speak it. And so I was like, all right, right, I need to get learning. And yeah I enjoyed the experience and I would love to I think as I'm getting older the storyline's changing which I'm really enjoying like I can't remember the name of it um there was a new film that's just come out well a few months ago on Netflix with um is it Ali Abad? Gangu by Katya Hardy? That's it yes it and I loved it and I just thought oh I, I'm, I'm in awe of her acting and just the storyline and it being told and yeah, that's the sort of stuff I would want to, to work on. If I did Bollywood, I want like a nitty gritty role, you know, that you can put your teeth in. Um, the only thing, I guess, maybe why I've shied away from uh, Bollywood, I can't dance to save my life. <laughs> and I wish I could. And um, in Camp Dilla, you'll see me completely out of my comfort zone. Oh, yeah, um, I've read that. <laughs> So we will see. I haven't seen it yet, um, but I will never forget uh, doing a rehearsal for the dance and um, asked him coming to watch. And I said, please don't watch, please don't watch. And he watched and he was cracking up because I was laughing while I was, we were both laughing. And I was like, I told you I can't dance, but I'm going to try my best. But we were both laughing. So I think if I could get a bit more confident in dancing, I would love to then explore that. But um, I've had one dance class in my life, not including Camp Dillon. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant well that's great and I think even uh, um, Asim as well like he's very inspired by Hindi cinema you know even yeah. if you look at so even if you watch Cake I don't know if you've seen Cake his, uh, his feature film it was amazing um, you must watch it and even then he had like a really nice reference of a classic Hindi film song Pia Tu Ab Tu Aja he you know sort of referenced in that movie and it was so nice to see how he's brought that back you know in terms of Khan Abdullah too which I think is great but I think Matni who would you say is your acting icon who would you say is an inspiration that you really look up to for, you know first thing that always pops in my mind like for me it'd be Gajal and I know that I I just loved her growing up like I was the kid that would watch like uh, you know like go to Chota here and sing along and I remember they were filming in South or once um the, I think it was like the, in the Broadway and I, I got a picture with her and I ran up to her and I just yeah I always grew up watching her and like Shah Rukh Khan and it was like that was like that's what got me into like thinking oh like I want to do this um at the same time I always say as well with my the western side tv and I luckily got to work with her on the show was goodness gracious me you know Nina Wadia is like my idol and she opened the doors for you know British South Asian actors to to you know that show did it for me watching it I mean I used to hide on the stairs and watch it parents didn't allow me I was too young but as you know I grew up with that and yeah I'd say they're my idols. Wonderful. Well, look, Khan Abdullah is going to be streaming on ITVX from tomorrow, uh, which obviously we've spoken about at length. And I think it's going to definitely be very interesting to see how um, a Muslim doctor gets bitten by a vampire and how his life turns completely upside down. I mean, I saw a few episodes and I was literally dying of laughter. It was so <laughs> hilarious. But I think going forward, uh, what else can we look forward to from you? And what sort of projects? I mean, I know you mentioned that Gungu by reference, but what other projects, what other style of roles will you be really keen on exploring or getting your uh, teeth into? There we go. Try to um, <laughs> honestly, it's 
I'm really lucky with my agency. They put me up for a mixture of like projects. So for me, it would be, I would love like a role where it's like, even like a film, you know, a film where it has got, yeah, like a, I don't know. I just want to explore something with a bit more like, as, as I'm getting older as well, I don't know, actually, like more depth, I guess. Like this was my first step into, you know, having depth into this character, creating the character, working, you know, in a really long time. I haven't really done that because obviously I was playing 15 before, you know, I'm 31 in a, in a month's time. And I'm like, yes, like, so more roles, I guess, in my 20s, but having those stories told. I want a story told now, like, and and this was the first step and I loved it. And, you know, I just want more of that. I want more of these characters that you can, yeah, you can work with, you can create and tell a story. So, yeah, something, something like nitty gritty, like I did say, though, that'd be fun. Why not? Like, sure. That'd any, be good. any particular titles that we can look forward to, maybe, perhaps? Oh, at the moment... Not yet, not yet, not yet. I feel like I'm being reintroduced into the industry, to be honest with this, um, mm. with the show, because I did free reign for three years and I don't know if many, you know, I, I don't know if many South Asian, you know, people from the community knew that I was actually Indian on the show. And, you know, and so I gradually when I say free reign, like, oh my God, you're actually Indian? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> huh. Um. So I, I got a lot of that when I was when I was on free reign. A lot of people didn't realize I was Indian, and so um, I I remember going into my agency having a meeting, and they said I don't know what to do. I'm not getting any jobs. Like it's really hard. And she said you're playing 15 for a really long time. We need to reintroduce you. And so it's been literally like pushing me out loads of auditions, and I've been really really grateful. But Count Abdullah was the one where it just the role fitted me. Like it just felt right, and I feel like yeah this is me being reintroduced as an adult as a woman and I'm really excited to see and hopefully that opens some doors for me and then I'll go from there. I think this is a balance as well isn't it that every actor has to or, or fight rather that every character has to really overcome is that whole typecasting thing right like you know because oh. you've done a character up for so long it's just almost people recognize you as an entity and for you to shrug out of it as well but do you think you've kind of kind of at the you know finishing line of of brushing that off and you know getting your new identity heard and seen as well definitely definitely I think this, and like I said this is that this is it for me when this comes out and I'm, that's why I'm really excited as well because it's the next chapter of my acting career for me this is um so I'm excited I mean I literally chopped all my hair off after the show <laughs> I literally like I think it's two years ago I chopped it to a bob it's growing now but I'm just like right I need a fresh fresh look fresh start and yeah and I think also just turning 30 once you turn your 30s I think you really do it's like ah you look at your 20s and it's flown by and you've learned a lot and you're really you're content with who you are I'm really content with who I am um so I'm excited I know that this some, some, something will come along so you just got a faith right I'm sure no definitely faith is everything is everything and I and I and I honestly cannot emphasize that more but look can't wait to sort of see what people have to say about Count Abdullah, which is yeah. streaming on ITVX from tomorrow. And uh, I cannot wait to uh, see more great work from you. And Amrita is a thank beautiful, you. beautiful character. I really enjoyed watching her as well in the few episodes that I saw. So thank you so thank much, Amrita, for joining me on Film Mission Me. It's been so lovely to have you. And thank yeah, you. wishing you all the very best for this one thank and you. for the projects as well. Thank you. Thank you. Speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.